Hey guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I wanted to show you my steps for optimizing Maya for best performance, and also the tweaks that I do to speed up my workflow and just make things a little easier to see and get to. So the first thing is I started with a fresh Maya, just delete your Maya folder from your documents folder. And when you start Maya, you'll get brand new preferences. So the first thing you wanna do is turn off this and this. Highlight what's new is only important if you know everything from previous version of Maya. If you're still not sure, if you don't know Maya that well, this will just confuse you even more. So turn that off and turn show at startup off. Let's go to our settings. So we go to Windows, Settings, Preferences, Preferences. And I'm gonna start at the top here. Uh, the first thing I do is turn off the scroll wheel. That's a uh, personal preference. I don't like using the scroll wheel for zooming, so I turn that off uh, because sometimes when I'm trying to get to a um, very specific zoom level, you can accident or using the middle mouse button, you can accidentally move the scroll wheel and that's going to jump you back and forth, which is for me is really annoying. So turn that off. Let's go to your eye elements. Everything's fine. Help. I turned the help off. Uh, I don't, I know usually what things are. I don't need the help in the middle of my screen blocking things. Also, when you turn the help off, it's still there. It's just down on the bottom left here. So it's out of the way. Okay, let's go to manipulator. So this is a change that I make. Uh, when I switch tools from move to rotate to scale, I like my handles to get re uh, reset. Uh, basically, I'll show you. If I have a cube here and I pre-select, let's say the X, axis direction right if i press e and then press w i'd like that to be reset by default the manipulators are set to remember active handle i find this annoying because i when i switch tools i like to be able to move things uh from the middle like this using the middle mouse button and when that's pre-selected especially if i'm off screen it gets really annoying that's a personal preference so it's up to you i set that to reset to view plane handle Keep going. Okay, so this is another one that I set under files projects for autosave. I turn this on and then I set limit autosaves. So basically what autosave will do is just keep saving your scene uh, at a number, uh, at an interval number that, that you set. So I set it to 15 minutes. That means if Maya crashes and you lose some work, the maximum you lose is 15 minutes. And then I set number of autosaves to three. And the reason is, uh, I don't usually I don't have to go back that much. So if you do have to go back, you have three versions, but I, I can't imagine going back 10 versions uh, of my autosave. So three is fine, I'll just keep overriding and set it to project. Make sure you uh, set your project before you open your file. And don't turn on prompt before autosave, otherwise it'll keep reminding you that it's autosaving. It's really annoying to keep hitting okay. okay. It's all the same. Undo, set your undo queue to infinite. Uh, usually most people have enough RAM that you won't run out of undos. And by the time you do run out of un un memory or an undo's, Maya will crash for some other reason. So don't worry about that. Okay. So modules, I turn off paint effects. I don't use paint effects dynamics. I do use sometimes paint effects. I never use, it's not an often used thing. So turn that off, it'll just free up some resources. Hit save and go to file and click save preferences. Uh, when, sometimes when I change my preferences and then change my plugin manager, Maya will crash. And when if that happens, you will lose the settings you have set. So I just click uh, File, Save Preferences, this will save it. So if my crashes, they'll still be saved. Then let's go to Plugin Manager. And these are plugins Maya ships with, and we can turn a bunch of them off to speed up uh, the way Maya loads and just speed up resources overall. So Aruba Tessellator, I truthfully don't know what that is. I've never used it. I turn it off, I don't miss it. Keep going. There's a bunch of other things here you can turn off if you want, like the hair physical shader. I don't really use it um, because we're, I, I turn off XGen, don't really need that. GPU cache I do use. 
game pipeline, game FBX exporter. These are things I don't use, so I, I can turn them off. Maya Muscle. I don't use Maya Muscle, so I'm going to turn that plugin off. Mel Profiler. I usually turn it on. There's some things that need it, so I just leave that one on. Nearest Point and Mesh. I, some plugins I use use it. Some scripts, so I turn that on. Scene assembly, I don't use. I turn scene assembly off. And shader effects plugin, I don't use it at all. It's a shader effects is a, a real time uh, shading uh, plugin that I don't really use, so I turn that off. Uh, SVG file translator. This lets you import SVG files for like text and stuff. You can also just use Illustrator files. So um, that's up to you. If you don't need it, you can turn that off. Turtle, don't turn that on. Uh, type, sometimes I use. Unfold 3D, definitely leave that on. And vector render, I don't use, so I turn that off. You can always turn these on when you need them, so having them off doesn't hurt. Uh, Bifrost, this is the simulation for Bifrost. I uh, for like uh, liquid sims and stuff. I don't use this. If I do need to use it, you can always load it. So I just unload this like this. You just click load, load it and click it again, it will unload all of it. I've noticed MASH slow down undo sometimes, so I turn MASH off unless I need it. MASH is a pretty cool plugin, lets you do a lot of really cool animations. So, uh, you know, check out some of the tutorials on this, uh, but it's really cool. Uh, but I turn it off and I don't use it. FBX I do use. Let's see. This is M2A is Arnold for Maya. If you don't plan on rendering, let's say if you're modeling a lot, there's no reason to, to have Arnold loaded. Um, it takes up a lot of resources, and you know Maya load is much slower with uh, M2A on. So you can turn it off, and then when you're ready to render, just turn it back on. Not a big deal. Substance. If you don't have Substance uh, Painter or Designer installed, you don't need the Substance plugin. Uh, I actually don't have it installed on my computer right now, so I'm going to turn this off. When you do. If you do want to decide to texture with Substance, definitely turn these plugins on. Uh, so this is uh, Maya's... So there's there's a bit of confusion. There's a new thing called Bifrost in Maya. It's a node-based uh, architecture. You can like create um, simulations like smoke and fire and other things and also do other cool things with it. Uh, I'm going to keep this on. I'm going to play with it, so I'm going to leave that stuff on. XGen, I don't use. XGen is used a lot for hair simulation, so I don't really use it. So I turn that off and then click close. Go to file, save preferences again. Next, I'm going to go into, um, let's see, I need to find the hotkey editor. There's a couple of hotkeys that I set. So I'm going to go into choose a category, go to menu items, and go to modify. I, uh, there's three hotkeys that I said that I use all the time when I'm modeling, and that is reset transformations, freeze transformations, and center pivot. So you just click in here, and then the hotkey I'm going to set for this is Control Shift C. It's going to tell you that something else is using it. This is a, to me, a useless hotkey anyway, so I don't worry about that. Freeze transformations, Control Shift F. Uh, it's going to say the same thing. Don't need that. And reset transformations, Control Shift R. So R for reset, F for freeze, and C for center. Makes sense. Click save and close. Okay, so now what you can do is I can freeze, reset, and center pivot with these three hotkeys. It's really easy. Next thing we're going to do is um, I'm going to organize the top menu here because there's a lot of things here that are useless and some things here that are really useful but are hidden. So first thing is the sign-in thing. You can turn it on or off. I, I usually hide it. Don't need to look at it all the time. This is uh, a thing that I use sometimes, but I like to use the select by name. So just when you click this little th uh, roll up, you can click here, click select by name. This will give you a select by name. And then in here you can type in uh, wildcard, which is star. And then cube, hit enter, and that will select anything named cube. So if we do this, right? We have a bunch of cubes in here. I can type in uh, star cube star, hit enter. It's going to select all the cubes. So pretty useful. 
Next, we have a rendering. We want to see that, of course, so keep that. This is showing if history is on or off. I like to keep this as clear as possible, so usually history is on, so um, it doesn't normally turn off, so I'm going to turn hide that. So this will tell me if symmetry is on or off. That's kind of useful, so I'm going to leave that on. Also right here, this is my uh, snapping uh, buttons here, so I'm going to leave those on. I want to see that. This is also very useful. It's usually hidden for some reason, but this will uh, basically it locks selection. So if I let's say have a, a cube here and I want to select, uh, if I make a curve, I want to select the curve without selecting the cube. You can uncheck the geometry selection and then I can't select that cube. You can also do the reverse and only be able to select that. So I use this quite often to isolate selections and just help. It's very useful. Uh, this is telling you if you're in component mode or object mode. It's also very easy to see by just looking. You see the you know, cyan or whatever lines these are, and you know you're in component mode, you don't need this showing you. Uh, this is telling you if, if you have objects, polygons, you know, I don't uh, use that, so I hide that. And also this right here, this is save, undo, redo. You can all do all this with hotkeys, so I hide that as well. So this is what I see in Maya when I'm working. You can see it's a lot more streamlined, less things to clutter, uh, so I like to do that. Okay, save preferences. And then the other thing I like to do is I like to tear off the attribute editor. And the reason is uh, I like to be able to move it around uh, because I like to be able to see the channel box or the modeling toolkit and the attribute editor at the same time. And the other thing that I do is if I double click the tool, the tool settings, I also don't like that to be docked anywhere. So I always have that uh, floating. So these two I have floating. And then the other thing is if I accidentally move uh, one of these windows over, you can see how they try to snap, right? So by default, Maya will um, have your UI unlocked, but you can go up here in the upper right and turn this lock, and this will lock the UI, so you can't accidentally snap things to other locations that you don't need. And then the final thing is, I'm gonna show you is how to customize your shelves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just um, remove some of the some of the icons here that I don't need, some of the tools, and then add some other ones. So let's see, like the SVG tool I don't use. Delete that type. You can use this is a super shape that's kind of useful. Um, let's see, it's the bevel, merge vertices, border ranges. Yeah, that's fine. Merge the center. I never use flip triangle. Uh, it's used for gaming mostly, so get rid of that. Duplicate, I don't use. Uh, you can, but uh, I can just control D to duplicate the geometry. It's not a big deal. I don't use this tool. Merge the center, I actually don't use that either. And then circularize, I do use the new tool that's really cool. All right, now under the, these are the UV tools. I only really use the planar tool, automatic mapping, and I like to see the UV editor, that's it. And then I'm gonna add some tools. I'm gonna go to mesh, see what we need here. Nothing here. Mesh tools, uh, oops. Insert edge loop tool, I use this all the time. So the way you add it to your shelf is you hold control shift and click on a tool, it will be added to the active shelf. All right, so that's a useful one. And then I just drag it next to some of the other, like over here maybe. And then under selection, I'm gonna add contiguous edges. This is another tool that I use. I'm gonna add it next to here. So this is a very useful uh, tool. Uh, basically, if you select uh, an edge loop like this, double click it, you see how it selects the full loop. But if you have some uh, triangles here and you try to do that, it won't work because it only works on quads. 
but contiguous edges works on angle direction. So as long as it's by default, it's like 30 degrees or something, um, but you can change it if you go into select right here. Yeah, you can change the angle direction and then uh, it's very easy to select uh, edge loops when it's not fully quadded. So I have that there. It still has the old uh, icon, which should be updated. And then under mesh display, there's a couple things I, I, I do here because you want your geometry to be clean. So I'd like to be able to easily uh, clean up my uh, my normals. So first is unlock normals. So control shift and then click unlock normals. And then we're going to add um, soften edges, harden edges, and then reverse and conform. So what this does is this. If I click reverse, that's going to reverse my normals. Conform, sometimes this might happen where you have some faces facing the wrong way. Conform will flip into the right direction. Harden edges will harden all your normals and soften will soften. Sometimes when you're working and you're duplicating and adding and deleting and using booleans, your normals can get locked in a specific direction. And when, what I mean by that is if I go into mesh display and click lock normals, so my normals are locked now, even though I move this, these vertices, my normals are really, see how you can't even see that anything has happened. This can happen and if I press three, you can see it's actually, this is what it should look like. So to fix this, you click unlock normals. So I do, do this just as a precaution. As soon as I'm done with the model, I'll unlock normals, soften edge and clear history, shift alt D and I'm done. All right, so this is it. Uh, this is how I set up my Maya. I'm going to upload my Maya settings to um, in the description. So you'll be able to download if you can't follow along everything that I've done. Just download my settings, replace them with the settings you have in your documents folder, and you should have all of these settings as well. Uh, thank you for watching. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and uh, leave a comment. And I'll see you guys next time.